What's up, y'all? It's Julian Gordon here. I hope you're well. And, um, you know, I'm 100% committed to your freedom. Uh, I, what could be more important than thinking about your freedom and your family? Um, I can't think of anything more important than those two things, your freedom, your family, and your faith. Uh, and, of course, with that comes finances as well. Um, I'm actually at an inspection for a fourplex that I'm seeking to buy. And um, uh, the reason I come to inspections is because uh, I just like to be on the shoulder of the inspector um, to see what they see, to ask questions, um, to actually point out things that they don't see, um, and uh, also to talk to the tenants. Uh, I got a chance to talk to three of the four tenants uh, while being here, and um, I figured out what they love about this space, why they chose to rent um, here. Um, I uh, also learned w what issues they're having. Um, and they pointed out, oh, I need this, they, they didn't fix this, this and that. Um, so I get information uh, about what makes the property valuable, why they chose this particular place. Um, and I also get their issues and things that got overlooked and um, things that uh, a property inspection actually may not draw out uh, through conversation. Um, I found out that this home is a very pet friendly home because there is a, another lot attached to it uh, where um, three of the people actually have animals. They have dogs. Um, and so I would have never thought that I can market this as a pet friendly home. Two of the I also found out that a couple of the tenants are moving out in November um, <coughs> for various reasons. Nothing about the space. One is moving closer to family and the other one, um, uh, you know, is advancing in their relationship. And so they're going to be moving in with somebody um, in another place. So just natural causes. But uh, these are important things to consider, especially if one of those tenants is... Um, uh, under market, you, you can actually now charge market rate rents for that particular space, um, uh, knowing that, right? So, um, I'm at this, uh, I'm at the inspection, and um, I also like to be on the hip of the inspector. Uh, again, seeing what they see um, and having conversations because that information is going to allow me. I made an offer; uh, the offer was accepted, but. Those conversations, uh, of course, some of it's going to, sh most of it's going to show up in the inspection report. But I can take that data and those conversations, um, and now go back to the drawing board with the seller and actually renegotiate the price. In fact, um, in fact, I've actually, actually, on every home that I purchased, uh, with the exception of my first one, I was able to negotiate lower than my um, purchase price because of the data that came back from the inspection. Now, most of the things that you're gonna be able to get knocked off because they came up in the inspection, you're actually gonna to have to come out of pocket for um, to fix. So let's just say the roof was no good um, and it's about to cave in, you might be able to get $50,000 off the price um, or you can do approach it one of two ways. You can say, fix this and fix this roof and we're good to go or reduce the price and then um, then I'll be able to uh, purchase it and I'll take care of it, right? So I'll take it off of your plate. The only problem with the second way is that if I get the home at a lower price and I put 25% down, now I have to figure out how to come up with an additional $50 cash because the bank isn't gonna finance that. I have to figure out how to come up with an additional $50,000 cash to fix the roof. So it's actually better for them to make these fixes before I purchase because then I can get that financed and um, and uh, have all of my leverage without digging into uh, additional cash beyond the down payment and the closing costs and things of that nature. So <coughs> um, the inspection is important. Uh, the seller's agent is here. Um, my agent couldn't make it. That's not a good sign. Um, uh, my agent is supposed to be my eyes and ears on the ground. Um, I'm eventually going to get my real estate license here in New Orleans. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I'm here uh, to represent myself and make sure that this asset that I'm buying is one that is going to stand the test of time um, and one that is actually attractive uh, to people. Um, it is on the West Bank, um, which is a different neighborhood than I'm used to. And anytime you're deviating from your strengths, um, you actually want to do double research, right? You want to cross all your uh, T's and dot all your I's when you're stepping out of your comfort zone. I've been buying things on uh, the East Bank, um, where New Orleans proper is, um, you know, Bourbon Street. No, I'm not. I'm not buying in French Quarter, but just in general on that side. And so this is a new neighborhood for me, um, and 
and I don't know it as well. So I'm doing my due diligence. That's what they call it, due diligence, to make sure that this is a great uh, investment. Um, the cash flow looks great because um, I run those numbers, and you can run those numbers uh, very easily uh, based on the rent. You can automatically calculate your mortgage uh, the moment you agree on a price. I've gotten my insurance quotes already. Um, I've already uh, gotten... I already looked up what the property taxes are going to be using the assessor's office website. They have a tax estimator there. So I know the exact dollar for dollar um, amount and cash on cash return that I'm going to get from this investment property um, if all goes well. So uh, right now the inspection is critical. Uh, after the inspection comes the appraisal. I wish they could be done all at the same time, but the appraisal isn't going to be for another week. The appraisal is also a very powerful thing and I want to be there for that because uh, if the seller's agent is there and has a relationship, because the seller, um, the seller's agent knows the person who's doing the inspection, right? So you don't want that personal relationship to obscure uh, the um, inspector from actually being 100% honest. Now I've also worked with this inspector three t uh, three additional times, and so uh, and they also they have licenses that are. Um, and they're putting their license on the line um, if they aren't being honest. Um, but uh, the agent knows them as well. And so when the appraisal comes, uh, which is a separate thing, the appraisal comes through uh, an organization that the bank ends up hiring. I have to pay for the appraisal, though. Um, I've actually gotten properties reduced by $20,000 once the appraisal came in because they couldn't find uh, a comp. Um, a similar property that sold recently uh, for the same price that I initially made my offer for. So the seller had to come down to the actual appraisal value because the bank wasn't going to finance me at the higher price. So the appraisal uh, is good either way um, and it's required. So whether the appraisal comes in low, that means that you're getting the property for a lesser price than you initially agreed on. Um, or if it comes in high, it means that you're buying it at the price that you agreed on and you have some equity in it already. So either way the appraisal goes, it's um, it's it's a win and it's good information. Um, I I love it when the appraisal comes back a little bit. And, and so actually, if I'm trying to take money out and get all my money out by refinancing, then I would love the appraisal to come back high because then I'll reach my 75% um, uh I have 25% equity and I can refinance at that point in time and actually get all of my cash out of the property um, that I put in for down payment, etc. If it comes back in low, that means that um, I actually get to just spend less, 25% um, less than that gap, right? So if it came back, the appraisal comes back $40,000 less than the price that I was willing to pay for, then I'm going to have to put out since I'm putting 25% down, I'm going to actually have to put down $10,000 less than I was going to have to before. So um, either way, it's all good. But I just wanted to share this process with you. I'm learning. Um, uh, I bought a couple of my properties without actually seeing and just trusting the eyes of my, my agent. Um, this one I was able to be here for. Um, it's my biggest purchase uh, to date. It's a fourplex. Um, the cash flow it looks nice, and um, and uh, and it's in a new neighborhood. So I wanted to be here for the inspection. I just wanted to take you on the journey. If you are considering buying a multifamily home, uh, this is not my primary business. Um, this is what I do with excess cash that I have from the work that I do, um, which is coaching and consulting, um, help people achieve freedom, right? Um, mental freedom, financial freedom, and ultimately time freedom. And I do that through my courses, my coaching and consulting, um, and my online programs like 40 Days of Freedom. But uh, I just wanted to bring you in on this deal. I would show you the property, but um, uh, it is actually raining like crazy outside right now. I even had to pick up my daughter early from school. <laughs> so, um, this is what it is. So, I wanted to share this with you, um, just take you on the journey. I'll keep you updated on how this deal goes. Um, and, uh, yeah, I hope it goes well. Uh, talk to you soon. Peace.